You're listening to Reimagined Radio. Real talk, real life, real magic. Welcome to Love, Life, and Law of Attraction, the show that is all about helping you find the love you want in your life and loving the life you have right now. World-class experts, thought-provoking topics, and conversations and tools that are going to help you live the life you really want starting today. So pour yourself a cup of tea, have a tea, and get ready to join Love, Life, and Law of Attraction. Hello, everybody. This is Lisa with Love, Life, and Law of Attraction, and I am coming to you from Washington State, where I'm laughing, because we are having the first thunderstorm we've had in a long time, and my dogs are terrified and surrounding me and shaking right now, and so you're probably going to hear dog snoring and and scared dog noises in the background, but we're going to do this anyway. Today, I want to talk about imagination as a deliberate creation tool. And I really think that imagination is one of those deliberate creation tools that is underutilized. I mean, in the LOA world, we are constantly pitching new tools and trying new things and another process and another way of creating the life that you love. And there are so many of them. I mean, a lot of people have so many different processes where practice is going in their lives every day. Their deliberate creation practice feels like a lot of work. I mean, we're all kind of looking for that magic pill, so to speak, that can change things on a dime. And I think there's really only one that actually can do that, which is the use of imagination. And there's a few reasons why imagination is so incredibly powerful. I mean, the first reason is law of attraction. The science of law of attraction really tells us that the only thing that actually, well, I'll rephrase that. The thing that makes law of attraction work is this principle called quantum measurement, which is actually just an observation. We've talked about this before. And imagining things in your mind creates a whole set of quantum observations that send very powerful information into the multiverse, into that field of infinite potential. The field can't tell the difference between, quote, real unquote, or imagined data. So when you are imagining something, the field of potential truly believes that it's actually real. And eventually, if you do that line enough, long enough, physical reality lines up behind that and actual manifestation takes place. Secondly, I fundamentally believe that that shift on a dime is an emotional shift, right? We only ever want to manifest something because we think it's going to make us feel a certain way. And if you are imagining with enough depth and richness, you actually do that emotional shift naturally. When you are in make-believe, like a child plays with make-believe, you're feeling all the things that you want to feel, All the things that you think you would feel if you really have it kind of come true for you right then and there. That shift on a dime, that emotional shift happens when you're imagining effortlessly because it's a product of the imagining. Take a little practice to really nail the emotional essence of what you're trying to manifest. But if you imagine with enough lightness and enough playfulness, you will absolutely be able to get that emotional shift. And your world or your emotional world does shift on a dime. The third reason I think that imagining is the most powerful manifesting tool is because it changes the way we behave. And behavior creates outcomes. And what I mean by that is if I am imagining that I'm somebody who's rocking my business and I'm making a ton of money at it and I'm this you know, business mogul running an empire, I'm going to imagine that and then behave accordingly as I imagine it throughout my day. 
that's going to create shifts in my behavior. And those shifts in my behavior are going to create different outcomes for me. It kind of becomes an identity shift. That identity shift happens on the inside, but it has external implications or external results. And those external results or those external behaviors create results that are tangible almost immediately. Imagining is a one-stop shop for manifesting on every level, the emotional level, the physical level, the identity shift level. It really is a powerful thing. And the beauty of imagining is you can do it at any point. You don't need any special tools or a half an hour. Like you can Shift at any point during your day, doing whatever you're doing, and imagine that you are where you want to be or you are who you want to become and come at it from that perspective. I think the thing about imagination, though, is it's a double-edged sword. I mean, anytime we are in worry, we're actually imagining an undesired outcome, and it is just as creative. Imagination or pretending is a creative and active conversation with the field of potential. And so if we are using it to our benefit, it feels light and it feels joyful and it feels fun. But if we're using it to our detriment with that worry function of imagination, it you you feel the anxiety or the dread. The emotional guidance scale kind of lets you know where you're at with your imagining or pre-tending, or making believe, like all of those words kind of let us know what we're doing with this really heavy-duty tool. So our job as deliberate creators is to really think, be aware, have a level of consciousness or awareness about what we're doing with our imagination. Because what we're doing with our imagination is incredibly powerful in terms of the results that we're getting with our creating. We're going to get what we imagine one direction or the other. (laughs) We really are. So you may as well be using your imagination as a force of good instead of a force of something else. So we are going to pause for a quick commercial break. Then I am going to come back really quickly. And we are going to give you five short tips about how to actually leverage imagination in your life to get you where you want to go. Everyone talks about self-care. No one ever really teaches you how to do it. Love is a verb. If you want to love yourself more, you have to treat yourself like someone who's worthy of love. Behavior first, feelings will follow. The Self-Care Clinic is a free digital course that will teach you to behave your way to self-care and self-love. You will learn a practical, measurable approach to self-care that will save your sanity and might just save your life. Go to www.theselfcareclinic.online. That's www.theselfcareclinic.online. Register for free today. All right, so how do we do it? I think the first way, I mean, and I think that all of these ways, like they're fun and it's easy, is think about who you would be imagine who you would be if you were where you wanted to be in your life. I think one of the easiest ways to go about that is to think about what would you do with your spare time? I mean, a lot of people feel like they don't have a lot of control over most of their time, but everybody has a little bit of spare time. How would you start your day? What would you be doing in your evenings? What would you do on your lunch break? What would you, like, how would you manage your spare time? if you were living the life you want to live and then implement that. Don't just think it through in your head. I mean, I've talked about this before when I was doing work around my perfect day, when I really did my perfect day profile, I realized there were a lot of things in my perfect day that I had more control over than I wanted to admit. If I was really living my ideal life, I would start my perfect day differently than if I was going through the slog. And we all start our days somewhere. So your spare time, start there. Really imagine what that spare time would look like, even if it's just a few minutes a day that you think you have to yourself. And start putting that to work in your life in an active and real way. I mean, imagining it is one thing, and then pretending that you're doing it, like actually doing it through make-believe, 
reinforces that in the multiverse. Think about what you would wear. I mean, really, how would you look during your day if you were living the life that you wanted to live? And yeah, I mean, maybe it would be all Chanel or all Prada, but I mean, you can probably change it up and start showing up in your physical world much more the way you think you would if you were living your ideal life. In my ideal life, I would probably be in flip-flops and a sarong all day long, and I can maybe do some of that. But really, that is an active way that you can imagine and be in your imagining every single day. What would you wear? What would you look like? How would you do your hair? How would you do your makeup? How would you physically show up in your world if you were living the life you wanted to live? Imagine that and put it to work in your everyday life. What would you eat? I know that might sound kind of silly. It might sound like a minor point, but it's really not. I mean, a lot of people have visions of the kinds of wonderful food they would be eating or how well they would be taking care of their bodies if only X, Y, and Z was already in place. Like you might want to start with that now. Think about what your ideal relationship with food and exercise and your meals and all of that kind of stuff would be and start implementing those things. Pretend them, pre-tend them into your current reality and you will start to see shifts because your current reality starts to match what it is that you're trying to create. I think another aspect of that is what would your spaces look like? Spent some time this morning cleaning my office. Because a girl who's making good money is not working in an office that looks like a shit pit. And it's hard for me to be in that vibrational space of wealth and abundance when the space that I'm earning money out of isn't looking nice. I mean, really, space is something, environment is something that you have some control over. So start looking at your environment and pretending like you're already there. And making modifications as you go along that bring elements of your future self into your current environment. Queen of that, by the way, is Jacqueline Gates. If you ever want to look her up, you probably should. She does a program called LOA Nesting, which is amazing. There's my little my little <laughs> advertisement for Jackie. But she really is the queen of doing deliberate creating through your home and your space and your environment. And I think probably the last thing and maybe the most important thing is what would I be thinking? Like imagine the thoughts that you would think all day long if you were the person who had the life that you wanted to live and practice those thoughts, think those thoughts, pretend those thoughts into reality. We have a lot more control over what we think than we like to think we do. We tend to think that our thoughts are random, but you can actually direct and produce and sort of curate thoughts that you want to experience in your life. And if you are pretending you are someone else, probably the most important aspect, when I don't mean someone else is in another person, but a future incarnation of yourself, the most important aspect of that would be, what would she or he be thinking? Practicing those thoughts and playing those thoughts and having fun with those thoughts in your head is powerful. And I think, The key here is have fun. I mean, if you're not having fun, you're not doing it right, and it's probably not going to work. But if you can get up in the morning and pretend you are who you want to be and be that all day long with the sense of playfulness and lightness and joy, that is extremely powerful manifesting. That is deliberate creating in its highest form. And it is the kind of deliberate creation that can shift on a dime. Because if you do it well enough, you've already won the game. You're already experiencing the feelings that you think you want to feel. It's all about anyway. So if you want to get some help with this or anything else, if you want to check in with me, you can find me at lisamhayes.com. Lisa Marie, lisamhayes.com. And I would love to connect with you. Have a great day. There is no choice in life that will have more impact on your happiness than who you choose to share it with. Everyone wants to find that one big love. However, most people are looking for that love kind of like they would play the lottery. Finding great love is not a game of chance. Score Your Soulmate by Lisa M. Hayes is a by-the-numbers guide to finding the love of your life. 
and creating a life you love. Score Your Soulmate is a step-by-step soulmate finding formula that anyone can follow. What you will get along the way is a swoon-worthy life you'll want to share with that perfect someone. You can find Score Your Soulmate on Amazon or your local bookstore. Get your copy and start your journey to happily ever after today. attraction we hope you enjoyed the show and we'll see you back here next week for more information you can find me at lisamhage.com